You are listening to the ABC Business Show, and here are your hosts, Kerry, Elise, and MJ. Hello, and welcome to the ABC Business Show, where we help entrepreneurs make their dreams a reality. Hello, listeners. Welcome to podcast 48. MJ, can you believe we're at 48 already? I can't believe it. I love it. (laughs) So uh, my name is Carrie. I am your host along with my co-host MJ. Uh, you'll notice that one of our trio is missing today. So Elise is still up to her eyes in tax returns. And so we said to her, like, just go focus on that. And, and we got it. So yes, um, absolutely. So Elise, we love you. We miss you if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> which you don't have time to listen now anyway. So. <laughs> okay. So MJ, so what's going on in your world right now? Oh, not as much as yours. What's happening tomorrow? Well, my parents are landing tomorrow, so they're here for two weeks. So my son is super excited Aww. that they are landing tomorrow afternoon, but they, they got an earlier flight. So unfortunately, my kid is not going to get to go to the airport to pick them up, which he doesn't know about yet. So um, oh. that might be a case of like, hey, that, you know, when you get home, they should be getting home around the right time. So we'll see how oh. that one goes down. But no, super excited that uh, they get to visit. That is awesome. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's jump into this week's podcast. So uh, MJ is going to be walking us through how to identify lead measures. So is this one where they need their pens and paper, MJ? Uh, it might be, yeah, because I do I do go into a little bit of detail. So have it handy, okay. or if you're driving, just listen carefully. All right, so what is our quote for the day, MJ? Our quote for the day is, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. <laughs> it's an unknown author. I wish I could give credit where credit is due, because boy, does that say it all. That's exactly the same thing that I say to my clients is that, you know, you have to have a goal, you have to write it down. But if you don't know what your starting numbers numbers are, then how do you know when you've met your goal? So it's like, yeah, measure everything. All right. So uh, just to get your brains going. So I'm going to start with a question today. Are you keeping score in your business? You know, a lot of times people don't think about keeping score in business. They might think about it in like a sporting event, but they don't think about the fact that they need to keep score in their business as well. Just like sports, if we never kept score in a sport, nobody would come and watch. Well, you might come and watch if your kids were playing because that's what we do. But after a while, we'd all get tired and we'd stop watching because nobody's keeping score. MJ, I love that analogy that you just to relate that back to the business, like, yes, who would go to any sporting game if nobody was keeping track of what the score was, or if you were like, you know, in racing as to who was on, you know, who was top of the leaderboard, like, that is such a great analogy as to show the importance of keeping score in your business, you wouldn't go to a football game if they didn't keep score. So, you know, keep score in your business, you know, for the, the sake to keep it going. Love Absolutely. That. And, you know, a lot of business owners will tell me, oh, I do keep score. I, I look at the end of the year and I see that there's enough profit. Well, I'm not just talking about profit. I'm talking about what scores we keep, what we measure to get to profit. Profit is a lag measure. At the end of the month, at the end of the year, that's when you measure profit. I want to talk about what leads to profit today. What activities do you focus on to make the money? And once we start measuring that, we can then determine how much money we can make. So MJ, you you talked about focusing on activities. What kind of activities are you talking about? Well, let's just take for a business, for example, most businesses either selling a product or a service, right? Okay. So there's a system for selling a product or service, which might be referred to as a sales funnel. And that basically contains all the steps in the sales process. So an example might be, we've got to create awareness around your product or service. Then we've got to educate people on why they need it. And then we need to tell them the features and benefits. So if there's other competition, they know why they want to want ours. And then finally we close. So if you think of that like a funnel, then we started with awareness, education, features and benefits, and the close. So how is this related to lead and lag measures? So these steps are the lead and lag measures. Each of those steps in the funnel can be measured. Long before results, there's activities that you do that will lead to your company's success. If you are measuring the activities as well as the results, you have the ability to adjust what you're doing and improve your results. 
Okay, so the lead measures are the activity side and then the lag measures are the results. So can you give me an example of how this um, you know, could be applied to a specific business as to help our listeners you know, get that understanding? I would love to. And you know what? I'm going to use real estate agents, not just because that was a business I was in for a long time, but because everybody kind of understands what realtors do, right? Good idea. So, yeah. So the first thing is you've got to create awareness. And when I was coaching real estate agents, I said, you can't be a secret agent. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get out there. You have to market yourself, advertise. You need to talk to your sphere of influence. You need to create awareness, let people know that you are a realtor now. Then the next thing we need to let them know is why they needed a realtor. Anyone can buy or sell a house, right? But to buy or sell without expert assistance, that is a challenge. So we wanted to get people to know who you were and know how important it is to have a realtor. Then the next thing we did is we made sure they understood what exactly we do as realtors, how it makes a difference. Then we agreed to work together. And then guess what? One day there's a closing and the realtor gets paid. So let me go back again. They created awareness, right? It was it was simple. They did that, but it wasn't always easy. Then they said why they needed a realtor, what services they provided. So that would happen in the appointment. They'd have an agreement to work together. They'd create like a contract. And then finally, they'd have a closing, the payday. So how do we apply this to any other business? Well, we just break down the steps that you take in your business to make money. Every business is unique, so you need to adapt it to yours. Okay, so what are so, you know, typical questions or concerns that people might have? Oh my gosh, probably the first one would be how many steps should it have, right? They want the magic, <laughs> magic <laughs> dust. How many steps? Well, it needs to be seven steps. No, it does not need to be any specific number of steps. But what you do want to do is make sure that you've covered everything your client goes through to get to you. So, it, you know, real estate is fairly complicated. It's not the most complicated business out there. There's going to be businesses that are more complicated. They might take, oh, yours is a perfect example. You might take in information and then create a proposal and then bring a proposal back out, right? You might have to tweak the proposal and bring it back to yourself again and bring it back out. So you might have seven steps, whereas a realtor just has five. Okay. Yeah. I like that, that, you know, every business is unique and it sounds like this is something that people need to take their time going through and not just expect to, you know, create this in five minutes. So do you have them measure all of those different steps in that funnel? Absolutely. I want them to measure every step because between each of those steps is a conversion percent, right? So let's go back to our realtor. If they call 20 people that they know that are in their telephone and they're able to connect with three of them, and then out of those three, they connect with, they have one who has a real estate need, then those are all the conversions, right? So it's like 20 dials to three connects to one appointment. And once you know what those conversions are, then you can then work backwards to figure out how many dials you need to make to make the money you want to make on closing day. And that is why we want to measure every single step of that sales funnel. Awesome. So one of the things when you know, I'm talking about profit first is one of those behavioral things of, you know, checking the bank balance, you know, 10 times a day, every single day. Right. So <laughs> how often do you recommend people are looking at this score? Is this something where like, yep, you should be in that every day. You know, or like, nope, you got to break that habit. It needs to be a weekly thing or a monthly thing. What is, you know, what is your recommendation on how often they look at that? That's such a great question. Um, it, you want to look at the beginning of the funnel every day. So that start of the funnel the number of people that are aware that you are in this business needs to be tracked every single day because then you can adjust it and then nothing goes, you know, falls between the cracks, right? And then when it comes to appointments, now that could be tracked weekly and then contracts that could be tracked weekly, et cetera. But again, every business is unique. So you may want to really look at your business, do some A-B testing. Is it good for us to track it once a week? or maybe daily, whatever. And in times of crisis, you're, you're tracking it daily, sometimes hourly. <laughs> and then, so when should they make adjustments? You said, you know, from looking at it, like, you know, how do they determine 
you know, when those should be made? Is it a case of like, no, you have to give it some time? Or is it a case of, no, you see something that's not working, you adjust it right away? What, what's your take on that? I would say that once you get to the point of uh, appointments, I would say adjust it as quickly as you can, because you want to increase those appointments. Once you find that sweet spot and the number of appointments that you need to have to be able to reach your goals, then you can adjust that as quickly as possible. Some other things can wait, like advertising. You know, when you try a new advertising or marketing tech, um, not technique, but like a promotion, you've got to give it probably six months. It really needs to stick and build. And so something like that, you would wait a little bit longer to make an adjustment. Yeah, absolutely. On the advertising, people can be so quick to suddenly change direction without giving something the real opportunity to, to work, whereas they expect that to be that magic overnight success of you know, that advertising promotion. And that's not always the case. So, yeah. OK, lots of great information, MJ. What's our tip for the week? Our tip for the week is to start by breaking down the process for your company. Then look at the list of steps and figure out which ones are the key indicators for moving towards a sale. Then start tracking your numbers. The sooner you start tracking, the sooner you take control of how much money you make. Absolutely. And like we said, like, don't try and do this in five minutes and think you can just sit down and and create this. This is something that you need to think about. And I'm guessing people probably change it over time as well. It's not something that they create and then it stays the same. Is that right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, the, the more data you have, the more history you have, the better your conversion percents, the more accurate they are. Right. So if you just started tracking your dials yesterday, you only have one day of history that you're looking at. If you start tracking it and in a month you go back and review it, now you're going to have a pretty good accuracy on that conversion percent. And you can start applying that to increase your goals. Awesome. So MJ, it sounds like there's quite a bit involved in this. If people wanted to reach out to you, you know, what's the best way for them to kind of just touch base with you? Like, you know, on LinkedIn or you know, what are your, what's the I would way? say, yeah, I would say LinkedIn or just email me MJ at mymapscoach.com. I'm on both of those every day. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I just, there's a lot of great information in that. And that's something where, you know, people might just need a little bit more you know, guidance on that. So awesome. Oh, I'm always happy to help. Great information as always. So next week, we're actually going to replay a podcast next week. So this goes back to one of our very first podcasts we did when we were talking about what is profit first. So the reason we want to replay that is because in two weeks, we're going to talk about profit first and you're asking the question, did you jump in yet? And we have a special guest, uh, Liz Spawn from uh, Profit First Professionals or you know, headquarters, as we call her, uh, you know, for her to just chat with us about you know, why people haven't jumped in, you know, what stopped them from making that. So we just wanted to give you that replay on Profit First next week so you're up to speed on what it is and then definitely join us then in two weeks uh, when we talk about reasons that people haven't jumped in yet and how to overcome those. Absolutely. So so don't forget, if you have not liked our Facebook page, go find us at the ABC Business Show on Facebook uh, and then make sure that you give us a like and review on Spotify and Apple and make sure you're following us so that you always get that notification when a new podcast releases every Tuesday. Okay, well, this was great. Elise will be back with us next time and we will see you then. Thanks for listening. Bye. You have been listening to the ABC Business Show with Kerry, Elise and MJ. Make sure you tune in next week.